need to wait here. I heard those words and my heart sank because I immediately knew exactly what that airline representative was thinking. And it wasn't going to be good. Here's what was happening. My husband and I and my 21-year-old son, Mickey, had just arrived at Newark Airport. He had just gotten his ticket from one of those self-service kiosks, and he needed to put his bag somewhere. So he asked one of those airline helpers, you know, those people who are on the floor and, you know, kind of helping you out when you don't know what to do, and said, you know, where do I put my bag? And she pointed to the corner and said, you know, over, over there by the x-ray machine. And then we dropped off the bag, and the three of us walked to the stairs, which is on our way to security. And all of a sudden, the same woman came running after us. And she said, stop, you need to wait here. And I, I knew, again, exactly what was happening. She, Mickey hadn't made eye contact with her. And it set off like some antenna in her head. And it triggered, security alert. Okay, so I knew I had to keep the situation as calm as possible, and I said, ma'am, my son has autism. He doesn't look people in the eye. At, like many people with autism, it's really difficult to make eye contact. And she looks at me, and, oh, and I, oh, first I tell her, we're on our way to Arizona. He's gone back and forth a whole bunch of times, and we gotta go. But she doesn't want to hear any of it. And she basically, says, you just wait here. She walks away, and I see her whispering to this other ticket agent. <sighs> My heart breaks because I know how hard Mickey has worked to get to this place so that he could travel on his own back and forth to Arizona. You know, we have taught him everything from you have to show your ID, you have to show your you have to get through security, you have to take off your belt, you have to put on your shoes, you have to take off your shoes, you have to put on your shoes. And then we even taught him that you shouldn't joke about bombs because you'll get in trouble <laughs> from the TSA. And this is something we've done his whole life. We've had to teach him everything that comes naturally to, to other kids. We had to teach him hundreds of steps to learn how to brush his teeth, to put the toothpaste on the thing in the tube, and really hundreds of steps and even to wash his hair. We had to teach him first you need to use water in order to use the shampoo, otherwise it doesn't work. We, Halloween, you ring the doorbell, then you say trick or treat, but you cannot run into someone's house after. <laughs> so this, this trip to Arizona, his flight back to school, if she bumps him off this plane, you know, his self-confidence, he'll be completely devastated, and he won't even know what it is that he did wrong. Now I see her coming out of the corner of my eye. She's coming back, and she says, supervisor should be here shortly. Now I, I lose it completely. I go nuts. I said, you have no right to keep my son here. Just because he didn't make eye contact with you, you cannot take away his civil rights. He is a security risk. A security risk? Are you kidding me? What's your name? I say to her. And she won't answer me. And as I go to look at her bed, she actually covers it with her hand. Now the situation's escalating. You know, I, I am so furious that I actually say to her, you know, you're ignorant. You have no idea what autism it is. And you, I don't need to listen to you anymore. And she storms off and she says, you just wait here till the supervisor comes. <sighs> now I'm thinking... We're in trouble. The clock is ticking, and Mickey has a plane to catch. I look over to my husband, John, and I say, you know, I, and I mumble it. I could really kill this woman. And Mickey, who has been listening to everything that's going on, and is also very literal, <laughs> autism again, says, Mommy, yes, he still calls me Mommy, you cannot threaten to kill someone. <laughs> you know? Especially in the airport, that is a very dangerous thing to do, and you should not joke about it. <laughs> we have taught him well. Now, we're still waiting, and I just sort of think, I have nothing to lose. And I say to my husband again, no one's watching. 
just, just go take him down to security. He hasn't done anything wrong. You know, let him go. Let him go to the gate, say goodbye. He gets through security, and I'm still standing there waiting for this supervisor. And I don't know what possesses me, but I don't, I just should have just kept my mouth shut, but I can't resist. And I say to the woman, well, everything is under control now. Mickey's gone through security. He's on his way to the gate. Well, now I have her attention. And I have to tell you, I have never seen anyone sprint down a flight of stairs, run through security with such agility. She must be after a terrorist or someone carrying a bomb. But no, it's just my 21-year-old kid with autism trying to find a place in the world. She, her 100-yard dash work, she comes back with Mickey in tow. You know, he's clearly confused. But at least the supervisor has finally got there. And he says to us, well, I'd like to ask your son a few questions, if that's okay with you. First he says, Mickey, you know, you're sitting in an emergency row, and they ask you to open the emergency door. What are you going to do? Mickey says, I don't sit in emergency rows. Two points for Mickey. <laughs> and then he asks some other questions, you know, some kind of test he's trying to do to test his mental abilities. And then a trick question. He said, Mickey, let's go upstairs and talk. Should we take the escalator or the stairs? And Mickey looks at him and he says, well, the escalator's going down. And we, we want to go up, so we have to take the stairs. I think in my head, he has autism. He's not stupid. But I think the supervisor figured some of that out because he said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to walk your son to the plane. And when I get to the gate, if the flight attendant feels comfortable and is willing to take him, I'll let him fly. If not, I'll bring him back here to you. We say goodbye. And then we wait. And we wait. And we are so anxious because I know if he brings him back, if he brings Mickey back to us again, he'll just be, his spirit will be crushed. And I, I don't have any idea what I'm going to say to him. And it, and it feels like we've been waiting forever. And finally, my cell phone rings, and it's Mickey. And he says, I'm on the plane. I'm going to Phoenix. Bye. And we go, hooray. You know, be safe. Call us when you land. And then John and I look at one another and head to the parking lot pretty silently. We get in and we sit down. And then we both cry. And I'm, I'm not sure if it was out of sorrow or relief, or maybe even a little bit of happiness, because somebody decided that day, my son was up in that plane because somebody decided to have his back. And I like to think, or at least hope, there'll be many more people in his life that will say, yes, Mickey, join us. Have a seat. Thank you. Thank you.